the Armor build, a build focused on using heavy armor for your survivability. It utilizes the ability to tank large amounts of enemy shots, even on higher difficulties. For this build in particular, it's also a very good team-oriented build considering the skills and the perk deck that we will be using. This build does not need any DLC to be used. It is also certified for use on any difficulty, including Deathwish and One Down. Since this is the armor build, we're going to be specking into a lot of armor skills, like regen and damage reduction. To start off, we'll be picking up Underdog Ace for that 10% damage reduction. Resilience Basic and Shotgun Awe Basic will help out with the armor recovery rate. Bullseye Ace for regenerating armor upon successful headshots. And of course, Iron Man Ace to unlock ICTV armor, as well as increase our total armor value by 30%. Now to get up to those skills, I have also got the Ace version of Resilience, as well as Transporter and Die Hard Basic. Now while Die Hard in particular is very handy for this build, these three skills will help out in any setup you have, Dodge or Armor. To help with my survivability, I opted for a Joker setup. Not only do Jokers help draw aggro away from me and my team, but by picking up these skills, I'll also be able to increase my damage reduction, my speed, and my health. And with that, I've picked up Force Friendship, Confident, Joker, Partners in Crime, and Hostage Taker, all aced. Since this is also my team-oriented build, I'll be picking up Medbags and Inspire. With that, Combat Medic Basic, Painkillers, Combat Doctor, and Inspire, all aced. With a few skill points I have remaining, I picked up a few quality of life stuff. If you're playing one down difficulty, of course, you gotta have nine lives aced. In Ghost, I've also picked up Duck and Cover and Parkour Basic. A few speed skills, so I'm not slow as molasses, even in armor. And last but not least, in Mastermind, I've also picked up Stable Shot Basic, Marksman Basic, and Aggressive Reload Ace. Now, with the weapon setup we'll be using today, this will help immensely for any single shot assault rifles. For our perk deck, we'll be using Crew Chief. As I mentioned earlier, this is a team oriented build, and Crew Chief is mainly what makes it so. It gives damage reduction, stamina, health, and armor to your teammates, as well as yourself. It pairs very nicely with the Joker skill setup, and while it may feel a little lacking since you won't be getting the same types of bonuses from other, more selfish perk decks, you'll still get a very generous armor and health combination. For my primary weapon, I'm going to be using the M308 rifle, one of the strongest base game assault rifles. This is modded with a Porty Compensator, Stability Boost, Lead Combo, Surgeon Sight, and the Jaeger Body. For my secondary, I'm going to be using the 5.7 AP Pistol, modded with the Tin Treated Barrel, the IPSC Compensator, Accuracy Boost, Tactical Pistol Light, and the Extended Magazine. For my melee, I'm using the Electrical Brass Knuckles. For my throwable, I believe in the gameplay I had Dynamite on, but this could be easily substituted with one of the Community Grenades. I'm not actually sure if there's a difference between them or not. I'll be bringing Doctor Bags, ICTV Armor, and yeah. No oh boy, when was the last time I did this kind of video? Well, a lot of people have been asking for updated builds and shit, so here it goes. I got a few more planned anyway. I'm gonna try to keep it pretty general this time instead of doing weird obscure builds. But enough of that, let's discuss this build. So, armor builds on one down difficulty, they're fairly fickle, at least for me. When the difficulty scales in a way that just increases the damage that enemies can do, using armor for survivability is definitely the method that gets the short end of the stick. I mean, it's still usable, but everyone knows that as you go higher up in difficulty, armor just feels less and less amazing. For me, at least up until Death Wish, you know, somewhere around there, I have no problems with armor. But once you hit one down, I prefer using dodge instead most of the time. While dodge isn't super consistent, it definitely feels like you can get away with a lot more bullshit. But if you're not used to how it plays, it can be pretty awkward, and sometimes you aren't too keen to depend on chance to keep you alive. And I guess that's where this build comes in. The glass cannon that is dodge has its own ups and downs, but there's a consistency that you find in armor that makes it somewhat reassuring. Knowing the full extent of your abilities lets you play a little more intelligently, rather than just running around and praying to Lord Jeebus you survive. One thing you might wonder about this build in particular is why I went with Crew Chief instead of another perk deck, you know? Surely you're more tanky with something like armor or muscle, thus more befitting of an all-armor build. 
Maybe, maybe, but there's more to tanking this than just how much armor or health you have. In this case, a large focus of my survivability is entirely dependent on having jokers up at all times. Jokers are the converted dominated cops that you can use, and they'll increase my health pool, as well as give me all the bonuses that my skills in Perknack offer when the hostages are present. These stats are not inherently visible in the menu, but they're definitely what'll save your ass when you need it the most. You know, this includes things like damage reduction, the speed increase, it's just all the small things that add up together to make your life easier. As I mentioned earlier, jokers are also the ultimate asset in drawing aggro away from you and your team. Less bullets flying at you means you have less damage to worry about. In a sense, increasing your tankiness. And with all those jokers and hostages to keep worrying about, that means you'll always be giving some of your bonuses to the rest of the team, helping them survive longer in the heat of battle. This is much more apparent on lower difficulties, but these team bonuses will still be pretty handy for anyone else on your team that isn't running a glass cannon setup. And when your teammates live longer, that means again, more aggro from the enemies are split among the entire team, rather than focus on a few people since others have gone down or something like that. By keeping your team alive, by keeping your jokers up and around, and by using your own abilities, all of these things combined help make you more tanky. You know, not just through the numbers you see in your own stats, but by everything else. I feel like too often in this game, people sweat over all the numbers too much when what happens in-game is totally different than your perfect vacuum chamber of scenarios that you play out with all your numbers and stats and everything. You know, I know I was like that at 1.2, but eventually you just start to go with what sounds right and then play it by ear, using experience as your main mode of figuring out what's best. Also, I uh, realize right now that I'm going about how nicely this build works for being a, a team-oriented setup but with the Jokers and Crew Chief and everything. I'm not even playing with the team right now in the gameplay. <laughs> I'm just playing with AI. I thought that was pretty ironic. But, yeah. Just fuck pubs so much. You know? And if you're wondering why I'm not playing with the usual people I play with, it's because they got lives or they moved on from this game, so I don't get to play with them too much anymore. So, you'll see me play a lot solo with AI, because AI will never betray me. Especially not in stealth. Okay, but we're getting off topic. <laughs> I just thought I'd share. So, what else is there to say about this build? It's fairly straightforward from the armor standpoint. You know, pick up as much armor skills as possible to boost the armor that you've got. Uh, I don't pick up Frenzy, which is the only other skill that I think of off the top of my head that would help with the damage reduction and a lot of armor stuff. But in this particular setup, I didn't get a chance to use it since, you know, uh, that's a lot of skill points that I need to invest and I'd rather have jokers instead. As for the weapons, I wanted to have a build where I'm not totally restricted on the weapons, you know? Sometimes you want all snipers, sometimes you want uh, all this or that, and sometimes you just have to have like two very specific weapons for this build to work. I wanted a little bit more maneuverability, I guess. On one down difficulty, I'll generally stick to the DMR assault rifles since they're probably the best for that difficulty. Very strong, very accurate, uh, fairly decent ammo, at least with the M308. But you can also make do with the other ones like the AMR-16, M16, the AK-762, those kinds. I tend not to use those because they tend to have very meager ammo pickup. With the M308, you've got a weapon that'll cover your ass any distance, has the damage and rate of fire that's good for taking out specials, especially bulldozers, and has a very generous pool of ammo, and ammo pickup. The only real downside to it is the slow reload and small magazine size. That's the uh, main reason why I picked up Aggressive Reload, so reloading the M308 isn't as painful. If you do have DLC though, you could use DMR kit assault rifles instead, like the AK, the Car 4, M16, uh, the Gewehr 3, uh, actually no, the Gewehr 3, I don't think that, does that have a magazine increase? I don't think it does. Anyway, uh, those other assault rifles, they can be modded with DMR kits, and that'll give it the same damage as the M308, as well as some other stats like accuracy, but since the base gun is still relatively the same as before, they'll all have large magazines, like 30 round magazines, as opposed to the M308's 10, meaning you could do without the reload skill. Of course, those guns, if you do use the DMR kit, they also don't have the same ammo as the M308, whether it be pickup or the pool, but... Yeah, everything's a trade-off in this game. Had I not picked up the reload skill, I probably would have went with something like Swan Song. Can't really go wrong with Swan Song. So, my secondary, uh, that's also fairly straightforward, I guess. The 5.7 AP pistol, it's a very powerful pistol with a healthy rate of fire, unlike the other pistols of that damage. And it doesn't require a lick of pistol skills to be useful. 
plus the ability to penetrate shields is a nice bonus, which is actually the main reason why I'm bringing it along, since the M308 can't do that. Again, due to the nature of this build, you could substitute it with another weapon, another pistol. An SMG might work, uh, but on one down, SMGs are a little harder to use, at least for me, so I prefer having a strong pistol instead. Through both of the weapons, you'll be fairly well sustained in terms of ammo, so I didn't really see much of a need to go with ammo bags. Instead, you know, the main problem with rundown difficulty is just the lack of med bags or people dying, so I tend to gravitate towards picking up Inspire and med bags. With how the skills worked before, it'd be kind of odd to see armor users with Inspire, since they needed Enforcer and Technician skills. Oh god, who remembers those days? Ooh, those were, uh, those were crazy. But yeah, now it's pretty easy to bring Inspire with an armor build. Overall, I find this to be a pretty solid build. Yeah, I only really started using it when they buffed Crew Chief, since I was curious how well it would work out. And since I don't use armor too much, I had a friend send over a mock build, and I just kind of went from there. So, yeah, I'm, that's really all I gotta say about this build. Fairly straightforward. Most of the focus is on survivability, rather than the weapons or a unique playstyle, which sometimes it may be. I use it as a base for a lot of my other builds, like my sniper one, or the shotgun one. If you're looking for a dodge build that uses no DLC, I'll have one of those out soon as well. Uh, these videos take time to make, so I'm not sure when, but uh, I'll get it out when I can. Until then, I got other stuff up my sleeve, so I'll see you later. I've also picked up Transporter and Die Harder. Die Harder? <laughs> uh, 